Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today we're going to talk about why the nerds are going to rule SHTF. So let's get to it. This is a quick motivational rant for you. Probably not quick. Who knows? I'm going to ramble on for 15, 20 minutes. You know how it goes. I've been thinking a lot. Uh, one of the underlying things that always holds me back, and I'm sure this is not only for me, this is for most people, is our lack of humility. Humility is so crucial for strength. Strength of any sort, be it physical, mental, or emotional strength, or spiritual strength. It is one of the most empowering states of being that you can be in. In fact, it is the difference between the pen and the sword. If you look at the guys fighting on the front lines with swords and compare that to the alchemist in back in the castle, you know, experimenting with things like gunpowder, probably some, you know, four foot tall, frail little man that you can envision sitting there playing with all these different types of uh, saltpeter and other chemicals, whatever it takes to make gunpowder. I don't know what it takes, but playing with those chemicals in order to create something that can totally annihilate 50 of the most brutish goons you can imagine. And this is why the nerds are going to rule the collapse. Eventually, there's going to be those bands of nitwits that cause a ruckus and they'll they'll run on for for some time but eventually eventually they're going to get cut down eventually they're either going to cut themselves down or they're going to incur so many gradual casualties that they're just simply not going to last long i mean you live by the gun you're going to die by the gun whether it's in the here and now or whether it's after a collapse scenario it's just the way it's going to go. So this rant is not only relevant to how things might take shape afterwards. Because it's going to be the little guy in the corner. Remember that video I did with Big Herc over at... Uh, what's the name of the channel? The Fresh Out series. He talks about how the shot callers in prisons aren't the people who you think are going to be the shot callers. In fact, usually they're pretty gray, man. They lay low... You only know who they are if you're in the know there, if you're a prisoner. You wouldn't be able to know if you're an onlooker looking in who the shot callers were. They conduct things from the shadows. They're not the biggest, baddest, toughest guys. They're the people who are smart. You know, think about it. You know, you, you have a lot of preppers right now prepping their skill sets, and that's great. I mean, it's great to have those fundamental skills that are going to see you through and allow you to be self-sufficient but really when you look at it at the end of the day do you think the people who are going to be really ruling things are going to be the ones who are breaking their backs on the land has it ever been that way no it's never been that way the reality is you're going to have the same sort of subset of the population right now you have one a brand of intelligence which is a social street smart intelligence a hustlers type intelligence and you have another brand of intelligence which is strictly objective strictly scientific people who are able to make very calculated decisions about things um, and you know if you pair that with a little bit of charisma or you get somebody who has that cunning and street smarts you pair that with somebody who is very intelligent like a eugene off of uh, The Walking Dead, you know, the guy who kind of knows something about everything, it's going to win. That's what's going to come out the victor in the end. It's not the brutes. It's not the, the henchmen. If you'll notice, in, in most cases, there's the brains, there's the brawn. You know, in most crime syndicates, that's what it com is comprised of. You got the brains of the operation, then you have the brawn. Very seldom are those two things together at the top and a lot of people think it's just going to be a bunch of marauders and you know that everybody really emphasizes the tactical angle in their preparedness strategy but you very seldom if ever hear about the post-collapse politician and let's face it if you have the ca capacity 
to not only unite people, but it, because that's going to be where the, the power is at. I mean, you can have a squad of five or six guys who are, you know, trained killers and psychopaths. But at the end of the day, if you have the numbers of people, they're not going to be able to to deal with that. And even those guys, those uh, marauders that we all envision, the scary evil marauders, the roving gangs and all the rest, the Mad Max type stuff, those guys, everybody's got to take a break from that. Everybody has moments of weakness. I've seen the biggest, baddest people be brought to tears. Everybody has something in their life that can bring them to tears. And it's through those moments of weakness where that ego that machismo laid in front that they put up is going to break up and that's going to be exploited by somebody who has the brains to play those people to play the soldiers off the civilians the only way to get ahead in life is humility and i'm very guilty as charged of not being as humble as i need to be and avoiding being educated by others because i think i know it all i'll be the first to admit that you can't tell me that you don't have moments like that too. Obviously, we all have it to varying degrees in different domains, and that's why people never change and people never get anywhere, because everybody thinks they're the greatest in their own minds. While that can be an empowering state of mind and being confident is a great thing, it puts a limit on how much you can be educated. So if you're looking at, take the example of bodybuilding. It's a great, easy example to understand. A bodybuilder, an actual big, you know, bodybuilder, even though they're on the juice, it, it takes a lot of training in order to get that way. Those guys, you'll never see them really lifting heavy, heavy weight in the gym on a regular basis. They're lifting lightweight. They're going for a thing called time under tension, where you're really trying to work that mind muscle connection. You're using lightweight, high reps, high to moderate to high reps. Uh, and then you'll see these other guys in the gym who are lifting really seriously heavy weight, but they they don't look the part, which is fine. I mean, if that's if you're into the functional fitness thing, that's fine. But if your aim is to to bodybuild, then y you have to do it in such a way where you don't look like you're the strongest person in the there and now. But that's what's going to lead to those kind of gains. So you have to be willing to sacrifice your ego in the moment. Is what I'm saying in order to to get to where you need to get to so if that means taking constructive criticism from somebody in your life who you're resistant to taking criticism from for whatever reason you know we all have our reasons for that maybe it's your boss maybe it's a mentor in your life maybe it's a parent a family member a spouse even your children might see things about you that you're resistant to those ideas well consider those ideas and indeed they may be mistaken they may not be correct but if two people point out the same thing and three people point out the same thing about you then that's something to consider you know so humility spiritually mentally physically if you can be humble in those domains especially in the realm of frugality so if you can be uh not be flossing as they say on the street not be fronting you know about what you have and what you got see some people you know they see the value in delaying that gratification so they can take that money and those investments and invest it in something which is going to actually make them money in the future now others will just want to show off what they have you know so the it's all about the bling right and that's one of the things which has totally uh, held back many people who could have been very successful in modern day america if they would have just managed their money but their ego got the best of them the narcissism of modern materialism gets the best of people and in order to to really harness your true potential frugality education self-discipline hard work not just hard work though because hard work isn't enough. You can be the hardest working janitor. That's all you're going to be is a janitor. It also takes a plan. It also takes uh, the willingness to make change. 
to make changes, to make those moves that you got to make to get where you got to get to. And that takes a bit of courage. It takes... It, it requires you to not avoid the more challenging things that are going to take a little bit of maneuvering. The things that don't come easy. And in a lot of ways, that's a harder thing because it's more cerebral. It requires a lot more energy to put into something like that than to just do the mindless automated things, which, as many of you know, if you watch this channel for the last few months, I've been hot on the topic of automation and how AI and automation is going to be replacing a lot of those jobs which require the mindless tasks. So if you're in one of those positions, then you should probably start thinking about what you're going to do in the next 10 years when all of this technology we're seeing right now accumulates with robotics and artificial intelligence and um, self-serving, uh, you know, like self, uh, what is it called? You know, do-it-yourself, checkouts, everything like that. When all of that stuff coalesces into the automation revolution, where are you going to be? And things are as good now as they're ever going to be for you to get as prepared as possible. So there's there's a couple messages in this video that I want you to take away if possible. And lots of this is notes to self. Because even me giving you this message is kind of contradictory to the message itself for myself anyways. Because here I am saying be humble. And I'm also giving you advice on what you should do. So as they say a hypocrite can still be right. And indeed this is advice that I myself need to heed. If I am going to improve in the areas of my life that I need to improve in in order to be more prepared and well-rounded but just remember it's not just about having the best skill sets because there are people out there whose skill is getting people with skills to do things for them and that is that's what they're gonna bring to the table and that's not a skill that you've seen flexed in this preparedness community a lot. Everybody thinks, oh, it's going to be the end of politicians. Hell no. There's always going to be some charismatic person which unifies a community. That is a vital role in a community. And that's where politics and, um, oh, geez, what's the word? Monarchy and all of those things come from. It's because people need rulers. People need, and you could argue that they don't. And let's not, I could argue that they don't, okay? I could play the devil's advocate with that argument. But I'm not even saying they necessarily need rulers. We could have a debate about anarchy and all the rest. But what I'm saying is that's what's going to happen. You know, you could say, oh yeah, it's just going to be a bunch of people living independently and in la-la land in some post-apocalyptic anarchic utopia. But that's not how it's going to be. Come on. We all know that's not how it's going to be. Somebody is going to get on the bullhorn and start whipping people into a, a frenzy, galvanizing them towards some collective end or whatever, you know, to get them to do something in, in order to uh, maybe promote their own agenda. Maybe it, it is for the benefit of the community. Who knows what it's going to be? It's going to be different in every every community, but that's what's going to happen. So that is a skill. So if you have those skills, you can flex that skill. But again, it's it requires, in order to get ahead in life, you got to stay humble. Now, like, what's that, Kendrick Lamar, Be Humble? You know, lots of contradiction there. I actually like that song. Not a big fan of his other stuff. I think it's a little overrated. But uh, that song's got a good beat, good message. You know, I, I'm feeling it. You can be hard. You can be very masculine you know masculinity is all about execution it's all about pardon the visual but thrust femininity is more about reception and it's more about gestation and the building of something which is a very soft process it's about the creation of something which is a delicate process it's like that guy who's working on how he can build a bomb that can destroy thousands of people. You know, Einstein uh, e equals MC squared. 
It's like a nuclear physicist. It's like one of the first nuclear physicists who was trying to figure that out. You know, it was a very delicate process, which any old brute could just stumble through like a bull in a china shop and totally destroy. But once it was created, you know, it, it cannot be stopped by millions of brutes. So it's okay to embrace that those more feminine aspects of academic pursuits, educating yourself, because everybody wants to be the tactical all-American prepping badass. I get it. It's cool. It's fun. But at the end of the day, those guys are going to be being told what to do by somebody who has the charismatic sway, somebody who knows what's going on. It's not just going to be... It, it, it. Hey, if it was generals and military leaders, then why isn't that the case today? You know, if it was just military men who rule the world, then if, if, it, if only military men had the capability to lead people, then that would be how it is everywhere. But it isn't anywhere, pretty much. There are some military dictatorships, but there's still that political aspect of things. So, I mean, and especially to be the greatest military leader, that doesn't mean you, you know how to uh, administer the bureaucracy. And that doesn't mean you're effective in terms of managing the civilian population in such a way where you're going to have a productive society to boot. So in order to do that, you need that middleman. So let's have a discussion about post-apocalyptic politics. Because it's not going to go away. It's the Negans. It's the the Ricks. It's the Maggies. If you want to use The Walking Dead as an example. Something we're all familiar with. Which in my opinion actually the second half of this season is a little bit better. I like where they're going with things. It's a bit more. You're getting a bit more depth to some of the characters. But anyways rambling on. So let's talk about all this stuff. Humility. Politics. Post-apocalyptic preparedness. Let's go. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Canadian Prepper out.